Hey guys, welcome back to another Management Force tutorial. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to invert your mouse controls and also change the mouse sensitivity. So this is going to be done through a very basic options menu, which I'm going to make. I have made a more advanced options menu, which you can look at as well, uh, changing the graphics. I've also made a main menu. So in today's video, I'm just going to be making a very basic one, but you can obviously improve the looks of this. But the basic fundamental coding and mechanics behind it is all the same and will work perfectly. So I'll show you what we're going to have now. So if we hit play, see I have this very basic test menu. We're going to make this look better in game, but we have a button and a slider. Again, this will look better in game. So you can see here, if I press this button, this is going to invert our mouse control. And if I move this, this is going to change our sensitivity. So now if I just click in here, my mouse is inverted. So it's inverted both up and down and the on left and right. You can change which ones you want to invert. And then also I change my sensitivity. So this is quite high. So again, we're going to make this look a bit better. This is just basic fundamental coding of it. This is as I was testing it out. So I'll show you how we're going to do this now. So what we're going to do first is we're going to set it up so that we can toggle our invert so we can invert the mouse and have it not inverted. So to do that, we're going to do that in our player blueprint. So for me, that's content, first person BP, blueprints, first person character. But for you, it's going to be third, first, what if you've named it. Once you've loaded this up, you're going to want to come down here to our mouse input. So we have mouse input here. I'm just going to extend this comment out a little bit and move the add controller inputs out like so. Then also going to disconnect the axis values there, but leaving the white execution pins in like that. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit the plus variable here to create a new variable. And I'm going to name this one invert value or anything like that. This is just obviously the value we're going to have to invert it. We're going to make sure this is a float. So change that to be a float. So it's a numerical value with a decimal place in it. Hit compile on that. And we're just going to drag and drop this in here and get invert value there. Out of this, what we're going to do is we're going to come out of that and we're going to get a multiply, so a float times by a float, plug in the return value of that into the value of the add controller your input, duplicate this, again, put the invert value in there, return value of this going to the add controller pitch input, like so. And then for the bottom values of these, so the, what we're multiplying it by, is just going to be the axis value of our turn and look up input axes there. So that's the base part of it done. So what's going to happen is it's basically going to get our invert value times that by the axis value and set that to be the value for adding our controller input. So basically, if we want it to be inverted, we're timesing it by minus one, normal, just timesing it by one. So we'll set that part up now. So if we just come over to the left of it down here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and add a custom event. And I'm gonna call this toggle invert like so. Out of this, I'm gonna hold down B, left click and get a branch, plug that in there like that. I'm gonna hit another plus variable and I'm gonna call this one inverted, question mark. So we know if it is inverted or not. And we're going to change this to be a boolean, so a true or false value, and just plug that into the condition of the branch there. So if it is inverted, so come off of true, we're going to set this invert value, and we'll do the same off of false. So we're setting them like that. The invert value of true is going to be 1, and the invert value of false is going to be minus 1. Because if we already have inverted controls, we want to set it back to normal, so times by 1. If we don't have inverted controls, we want to get inverted controls, so we'll set it to minus 1. And that will work perfectly like that. So I just select that and hit C to comment it. I'll just call this toggle invert value like that. And then we're going to call this function from our settings that we'll make later. So actually we'll make that now as the next step we're going to do is to also create the sensitivity. So we'll actually we'll finish the button first. So we'll do all of this part first. So we'll minimize this. I'll find the folder where I want to keep all this to keep it nice and organized. Mouse invert sensitivity settings here. I'll right click, get a user interface, get a widget blueprint like that. I'm just going to call this one settings widget. Now, if you already have a settings widget, you can put this in there. So if you already have a place where you want to put these, you can put them in there. But I'm going to make a new one as I don't have one. So in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a blur. Or actually, I'll get a border. Just put that in there. I'm getting this just so I can have the background as a solid fill image. So like that. And I'll just set this to be kind of a brown color. So like that. I'll compile and save that. Now inside this border, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a button. So put a button on your canvas panel as well. So you have a button in here. I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. And I'll put some text on this as well. So I get text there. In this text, I'm just going to do invert question mark like that. And obviously this is going to be to invert our controls. So I'm just going to put that there like that. Also just change the color of the text to be black like so. So now if we select that button and over on the right, we scroll all the way down, we get the on clicked button event there. If we come out of this and we cast to our first person character, or the character where you've just set up this code, object will obviously be get player character, like so. And as first person character, what we're gonna do is we're going to call function toggle invert like that. So basically whenever we press this button, it's gonna call that function, so it's gonna actually be 
doing this code here and toggling whether we are inverted controls or not. So that will work like that. So we can just compile and save. We go back to the designer like so. Actually, I'll do this slightly differently. I'll get a checkbox instead. That way it's more visual for the player so they know which one's which. So open the palette, if we just get a checkbox instead, so search for that and get that in. And do this, I'm just gonna drag this out a little bit, make it bigger. I'll delete that button, we don't need that anymore. By default, we'll have the check state as unchecked, so it's not inverted by default. And then again, we're gonna come all the way down to the bottom after selecting it, and we're gonna hit the on clicked event, or on check state change, sorry, and we can just copy and paste this code from up here. So we'll just drag that in there. So I've technically now showed you two ways you can do it, so you can do it on a button or this checkbox here, this one is obviously more visual. So now if we compile, save, go back to the designer, we can put some text on here as well so the player knows what it is. Get some text, drag and drop it on there in the same way we did before, like that. And again, I'm just gonna change this to invert mouse. The little tick box like that, so the player can just tick it like so. And you can obviously change the style and everything of it if you wanted as well, but this is gonna be good for me. And one other thing I'm gonna do in here is I'm gonna create the slider. So if you search in the palette up here as well, you search for slider, drag and drop that on there. We've got our slider, and then just get this to be the size and scale that you want it to be. And I'm just gonna put it under here like so. Actually, I'll move this down a bit, and I'll put some text above it as well. So if I get some text, place that in there just above it like so. Anchor that as well. And the anchor is just keeping it in that position on the screen so it stays there. And in here, I'm just gonna do mouse sensitivity like so. Compile and save that. Now if we select this slider here, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna change the value to be 0.1, the minimum value to also be 0.1, and the maximum value to be five. So what this does is basically one is a default value of the sensitivity. So we wanna have it as 0.1 as the lowest because obviously zero is you're not gonna be able to move the mouse. So you can maybe put that as 0.01 or anything like that. So it's really slow, but 0.1 is good for me. And the max value I've got is five. So that's five times faster or more sensitive than default. So again, customize that to be whatever you want. Just make sure that the value doesn't go below zero or reach zero, as then the mouse won't move at all. So we compile, save that. That is all we need to do there. That is the coding and the design of this done. So if we go back to our first person character here, what I want to do is I want to get find the event begin play in here. So I just search for it, that will find it for us. So event begin play, and I have it up here. If you haven't used it, that's fine, just come off of this. But I'm gonna get event begin play here, hold down S, left click to get a sequence, so I can then use multiple lines here. Then zero, we're going to the code we already have. Then one, I'm gonna create widget. With this widget being the settings widget that I've just made. Return value of this, I'm gonna right click, promote to variable and call this settings widget, like so. And then out of this, I'm gonna add to viewport. So what's it gonna do is it's gonna put this widget on our screen when we begin the game. So you may want to do this in the main menu or again in your options menu if you want but just make sure that wherever you're setting it, you are creating a variable here so we can access it and everything in there as well. I'm just gonna double click these to get root and nose to make it a little more organized. So once you've done that, I'm gonna come back down here to the mouse input that we have here, and I'm just gonna move all this out. So I'll move this out bit first, and also move the input axes turn and the input axes lookup, move those out like so. Underneath this, I'm gonna get the settings widget here. So get settings widget, which is again why you want to be able to access this. In here, I'm going to get slider. So mine's called get slider 190. So if you gave it a proper name, that will help as well. Out of this, we're going to get the value. This value is obviously going to be our sensitivity. So you can promote this to a variable called sensitivity, but I don't feel the need to. I'm just going to put it straight in. So what I'm going to do is out of the axis value here, I'm going to get another multiply. So a float times by a float. Return value of that is going to go back into this times here where we had the axis value going straight away. So actually be like that. And then do the same on the bottom as well. So that will go in there, that will go in there. And the bottom value of these multipliers will be the get value, return value there. So now what this is gonna do is it's gonna get the value of our slider and set that to be the sensitivity as well. So I'm just gonna comment that, call that mouse sensitivity. Compile and save, and this should be that now done. So actually one thing I wanna do as well is on the settings widget, I just wanna make a button so I can take this off the screen. So I'm gonna get a button in here now you don't need to do this as well if you are doing this separately, so in a main menu or an actual options menu, you may have this set up already, but I don't. So I'm just gonna create this button here, put some text on it. Text I'm just gonna have as close, and actually I'll set that to be black as well, so that you don't need to do this if you already have this set up. On the button, I'm gonna get an on-clicked event, and to close this, all I'm gonna do is just simply 
remove from parent, which is then going to take it off of the screen. So if I now compile and save that, and actually one of the thing here is I'll right click get player controller, like so. Return value of this, I'm going to set show mouse cursor to be false, and then I'll copy that. So select it, hit C, compile, save. I can close that now, and then back off of the event graph up here, off of event begin play. I'm going to come up here and put this in here as well. So now I'm going to be showing the mouse cursor when I begin the game. So again, this is just for me for this options menu. So now if I compile, save, this should all be done. So I minimize this, hit play to test it. You can see we have this here. I didn't set up the anchor on the border, which is why we've got this, but no need to worry. If I hit that, you can see that's ticked. So we've inverted the mouse. I can change the mouse sensitivity on here as well. So if I have invert mouse on, mouse sensitivity all the way up, if I hit close, you can see that now our mouse sensitivity is actually all the way down, but we do have it inverted. So mouse sensitivity is actually as low as it is, but it's inverted. So let's see why it did that. So let's have a look at that again. So I'm also just gonna make sure I anchor this to the whole screen so we don't get the mess up there. Compile and save that. You'll notice that if we don't tick invert mouse, and then we just close this, you see that we can't actually move. The reason we've done that is we haven't set a default value for this. So back in the player blueprint, if we select the invert value here, set this to a default value of one, compile and save. This means that if the player doesn't call this, then the value is gonna be one anyway, so it'll be normal. So now if we hit play, you see that if we don't press invert mouse, we hit close, this is gonna be normal. So the mouse has not been inverted and it's still like normal, no invert, normal sensitivity. So if we close this, we're gonna finalize the sensitivity as that isn't perfectly working yet. As you can see, if we hit play and change the mouse sensitivity, if I put it all the way up to the top, hit close, this is gonna be all the way up to the top. So actually that's that works on that half. That's very sensitive, that's the maximum amount. But if we put this all the way down to the bottom, so if we leave it around there, close it's going to have the same sensitivity so that hasn't really changed it so let's look into that now so we go back to our character blueprint here and to actually join all these together what i'm going to do is something slightly different so i'm actually going to move these so i shall delete these multiplies here move the invert value here move these multiplications forward a bit what i'm going to do is i'm just going to do all three multiplications together so i add a pin on all three of these and put the invert value in there like so and then plug the return value of those into the value of the add control input what it's going to do is it's going to multiply all of these together. I'm actually going to disconnect these like that. I'm going to right click on here, promote it to variable, and call it sensitivity. Plug that into both of these like so. What I'm going to do is back in the settings widget here, what I'm going to do is go to the designer, select the slider here, and then down here off of on value changed, I'm going to come out of this, and then I'll cast to first person character with the object as get player character like so. And then as first person character, what I'm going to do is set sensitivity. The value of this is going to be the value of this slider there. If I compile and save that, we should see this working now. So we won't, won't really need this, but I'll keep it there for the minute. So if we minimize hit play to test this, we can invert the mouse, which we know works. Change the sensitivity to be all the way up, hit close. Now we can see that we mouse is inverted and sensitivity is very, very high. Hit play again. Don't invert the mouse, put this down to be something low, set close, now it's not inverted and we have low sensitivity. So that works perfectly now. And the reason the way we did it before didn't work is because when we then closed this, so we removed it from the parent, what it was doing is it was just getting the minimum value again every time as it was updating every single time. So we didn't need to do that, so we just need to set it in the widget when it changes. So that works a lot better now. So now we compile and save, and like I say, this works great. So I think that by this video is we've done everything we wanted to do. We set it so we can invert the mouse and change the mouse sensitivity as well. And this works perfectly. So the mouse is inverted here and we have a fairly high sensitivity. We can change it again so we're not inverted and a much lower sensitivity. You can see this isn't inverted. And we have much lower sensitivity like so. So that works great. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.